guess this is restart number two. Five qualities of an entrepreneur, business owner, especially coming from a military veteran standpoint. So listen, guys, if you got a, a veteran in your network, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, yes, they're part of the Armed Forces to the United States. Um, this, is, this is for you. Um, listen, I, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Mark Suttmeyer, who uh, sent this to me for my birthday. Uh, it's been on my back wall, but since we're in the process of moving, I want to make sure you get special mention and a special shout out. This is Mark Suttmeyer, who gave me this um, this uh, American flag with the Marine Corps uh, logo on it. So I, I'm, I'm really uh, uh, thankful that this is going in my office. So I appreciate that, man. So you guys, you guys are tuning in now too, is right? What's going on, Doc? What's going on, Vanessa? What's going on, Uwe? All right, we're back in business. All right, cool. So uh, we're moving this week. So we're moving. Uh, listen, guys, uh, we used to uh, have an office right, literally right across the street at the tower. We are an executive suite, and then uh, we moved into a twenty-one hundred square foot office, and then. Um, uh, last September, we moved into this office. We're at right now 5,200 square foot office. And this week, we're packing up. You guys see the boxes. We're packing up. We're moving because we're moving into a 12,000 square foot office. So uh, we're gonna we're, we're building a training facility of entrepreneurs, of people uh, 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 taking on the attributes of an entrepreneur, the qualities of a business owner. And uh, how are we growing so fast? How are we growing leaps and bounds? How, 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 are, we, how are we getting guys like, like Kevin Hart? to show up to our convention in August. How are we doing this, right? How, how are we getting guys like Oscar De La Hoya to invest $10 million into our company last August? Uh, how, how are we getting uh, our CEO is going out there in, in, in uh, interviewing some of the craziest characters, not just in business, but in entertainment. Uh, just yesterday, if you guys saw my on my Facebook page, uh, our CEO, crazy CEO that he is, Patrick Bet David, he put me on the phone FaceTime yesterday with Ric Flair, right? Let me get two claps and a Ric Flair. <laughs> Woo! Right? How many guys know who Ric Flair is, all right? You guys know who Ric Flair is? If you, if you know who Ric Flair is, uh, uh, drop a message. Uh, drop a message. Let me, know, let me know that you guys know who Ric Flair is. All the WWE fans, all the World Wrestling Federation, uh, everybody in the 80s and 90s that grew up with TV because there's – there was no selection of different TV channels to watch. So, listen, our entertainment as kids growing up, if you can catch it, was watching wrestling, whether you call it real or we call it fake or orchestrated or choreographed, whatever the case may be. Patrick put me on the, uh, on the phone yesterday with Ric Flair. So how, how are we doing this type of stuff, man? How are we doing this as an entrepreneur? How are we making – how are we making uh, – as entrepreneurs, how, how, are we, how are we making insurance cool? How are we making it fun, Right. And so, you know, uh, lots of times uh, different industries gets the glory, you know, like real estate gets the glory, like uh, 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 Wall Street gets the glory, tech gets the glory, solar gets the glory. But how come insurance never gets the glory? So, um, anywho, I, I just I just wanted to give you guys some qualities and how we're, we're disrupting and we're creating a very sexy industry known as the insurance industry and how we're making it fun. And big shout out to all you veterans. Uh, that this is the, I'm, I'm I'm talking this from a military perspective, okay? Uh, military perspective. So we got we got some people here, some some Ric Flair fans, 16 time world champion. What's up, Anthony Contreras from Odessa, Texas? Uh, uh, Rod Rodriguez, veteran. What's going on, buddy? You guys need to check out his uh, podcast, the After Action Review uh, podcast. He started from scratch. Uh, I think he started from Ku when he was in Kuwait, and he's building his podcast to be one of the most prolific podcasts. In the veteran community, very proud of Rod, and uh, he's got some of these qualities. I'm about to read off to you guys that and how they treat uh, entrepreneurship, how they treat becoming a business owner, evolving from an employee, right? Evolving from an employee. How do we know we are an employee? Well, we are trained in an academic education system, right? We're we're trained that failure was bad. We're we're tra trained to be myself and I. You you do your own test. No collaboration. Right. And then when we find out in, in the real world in, of entrepreneurship that it's all about collaboration, it is all about embracing failure. It, it is all about working with other people in teams. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm going to launch out. By the way, I just want to give some special shout out to uh, uh, another gift. Uh, this is uh, from Mel Melissa Lopez. Melissa Lopez uh, gave me a, a gift here for uh, doing a workshop for her team uh, this weekend. A, a cigar from the humidor. Looks like it's a Davidoff Robusto. 
All right, Davidoff Robusta Millennium Edition. So I'm, I'm definitely a Davidoff fan. I love Davidoff. I love Avo cigars, uh, Padrones. Uh, by the way, the um, the the warrant officer that turned me on to cigars was Chief Warrant Officer Juan Navarrete, right? So uh, Juan Navarrete, oh, uh, Gunner Gunner Nav, Gunner Nav, we used to call him. I uh, just want to say appreciate you for turning me on to cigars. Uh, listen, guys, when we came back from patrol, we came back from a mission. Uh, I was a gunner at crew chief on a CH-46 helicopters. Now it's been replaced by the Osprey. Uh, every time we came back from patrol, every time we came back from a sortie, every time we came back from a mission, whether it be training or an actual an actual mission, and we came back safe and sound, no mishaps, him being the uh, uh, the maintenance officer that he was, he gave us a cigar, right? Everybody came back safe and sound, gave us a cigar. And that's what kind of got turned me out to cigars. It was kind of like my debrief moment. It was kind of my way to gather my thoughts. Is a kind of my way just to hang out with my buds, uh, my, my my battle buddies. So, anyway, uh, since so some of you guys are so gracious of giving to me, I want to give back to you. So, the entrepreneur book uh, that we're reading this month is Principles by Ray Dalio. Okay, uh, Principles are Ray Dalio. If you guys don't know who Ray Dalio is, he's kind of like the Steve Jobs of the investment world, right? Uh, he he uh, he's got a firm called Bridgewater. Right. And he uh, he talked. There's basically three books. There's three books uh, in one. It's his story. It's about his principles. And uh, um, it's 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 his applications uh, uh, to to, to uh, working uh, his life principles, his work principles, the principles he grew up. Um, and and uh, he actually uh, was draft. He was in a draft. He was in a lottery to get drafted by. Uh, the military for the Vietnam War. Uh, due to technicality, I think um, he had some medical condition. He could not uh, get, get in the military. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, he got involved in the investing world. And instead of instead of uh, 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 talking about a book of specific investments, he talks about principles. Principles. So if you want if 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 you if you want to live a long life as an entrepreneur, my hope for you is not to chase the dollar. Of course, making money is important, but it is also to make sure. That you are chasing, uh, chasing principles. Looks like um, Doc. It looks like Doc. You've read the book, right? Uh, really good book too. So another veteran here, Nina Bass Knight. What's going on, Nina? What's up to you? How you doing? And uh, 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 Rod Rodriguez here. I want to give you guys a special shout outs on this too as well. All right. So guys, listen. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Sapala, commonly known as a money smart guy. I was in the Marine Corps for eight years on active duty. Uh, I was a crew chief. I did maintenance on CH-46 helicopters, and I tra and, and I transitioned to becoming an aerial gunner. I was a, I was a, a for, uh, observer, worked with a lot of forward observers. I was a door gunner, a, 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 a CH-46 frog, and an XM-250 caliber machine gun. Uh, so that that was my that was my life. That was my role on the ground. I was doing maintenance in the air. I was keep I was uh, doing my very best to keep my side of the air aircraft safe. And, uh, and make sure we took off and make sure we landed just as much. So um, uh, if you're sharing the, if you're sharing this video uh, and you're sharing, uh, here, here's the thing. I want you to share this video, if you could, please, not only on your timeline, but if you're part of veterans groups, uh, Illinois Veterans Association, uh, uh, VFW, uh, the American Legion, uh, any, any veterans group in your local area, whether it be in Texas or Florida, or California, or Illinois. But if you share this video, and we're going to be tracking everybody who shares this video, I'm going to send you this book, Principles by Ray Dalio, okay? From me to you, as I thank you for sharing this video. All right, let's get into it. So five qualities, okay? Five qualities uh, that business owners never do, okay? Qualities that th these business owners never do. And I want you to track these things because... I, I, I'm very hard set against this word never. Matt, never say never, right? But when it comes to entrepreneurship and when clients are on the line, uh, uh, getting the business is on the line, growing your business on the line, and making money is on the line, these are some qualities. There, there's 10 of them, but for the purpose of this live stream, I'm going to give you five, and we're going to do some training on this tonight at our office, at our local offices all across the country. Uh, we have 42, 43 offices all across all across the country, and tonight we're teaching and training entrepreneurs on how to grow their businesses. These are five five of the things that I would never want any entrepreneur to never do. So, first one, be inconsistent. What do I mean by inconsistent? 
So you're, you're inconsistent when you show up to the office. You're inconsistent in your attitude. You're inconsistent in your behavior. You're inconsistent um, with your podcasts and your in your live streams. So uh, a lot of you guys know that uh, I live stream in the afternoon, hard set on Wednesday afternoons. Okay, that's my that's my social media calendar. Uh, I like to do two other live streams uh, on either Monday or Tuesday, or and definitely on Friday because Friday is when I do my uh, Red Friday, where I just specifically call on veterans, uh, uh, just to help them out. Uh, you guys uh, send me uh, uh, people to call. I reach out to them right here, right here on my phone, right in my office line. I reach out to them, coach them from transition from either active duty into the military, into entrepreneurship, considering entrepreneurship, or if they are an entrepreneur already and they're having a hard time adapting, improvising, and adapting and overcoming, I lend, I lend a helping hand on phone. I've been an entrepreneur now for 19 years, and um, I've been in the insurance industry for that whole entire time, okay? And so... Uh, I took I took a five hundred dollar I took a five hundred dollar investment and now today I'm a co-owner of a hundred million dollar company. So uh, so my wife and I were making seven figures a year. Um, uh, uh, 2015 we made two hundred eight thousand dollars. 2016 we made six hundred forty six thousand dollars. 2017 we made seven figures by making sure we're consistent. Okay, so if you want to have a business that's growing, you've got to eliminate. You should never be inconsistent. You should always be consistent, right? For example, when we're in the military, what do we know we always had coming on Monday mornings? We had formation. What do we know we always had, at least in the Marine Corps, on Thursday nights, field day? So you came home, if you're in garrison, Thursday nights, field day. Friday morning, inspection, okay? Sunday night, we, we, we did what we did on Friday, hung out as jarheads, partied all weekend, whatever the case may be. But guess what happens on Sunday afternoons, late af Sunday late afternoons? Right, we came back a little hungover, right, from from partying or having our extracurricular activities, no matter where we came from. But what we're doing on set us a Sunday afternoons, Sunday nights, which is one of my most peaceful, serene times of the week. I, I still remember, remember these moments coming back to the base. Everybody's coming back to the base, and all all you hear is, is, is on one side of the barracks you hear country music, other side of the barracks you hear hip hop. My side of the barracks you had hip house. House music. I'm a shy town boy, right? Got a hair house ch ch music all night long, right? That was, that, that was my music. So, so we had all sorts of diversity in the Marine Corps. But what do we always do on Sunday nights together? We're consistently squaring away our uniform to get ready for inspection on Monday morning. Okay. So anytime you knew, anytime you knew, you we were working up for our next deployment. We had our mus we had our musoc workups. Right, Marine Expeditionary Unit, Special Operations Capable Workups. You know you had to go to Camp Wilson for, for at 29 Palms. You, you know you had to do your, your SOC X exercises uh, 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 for two weeks uh, right, as, right side of uh, San Diego and Miramar. Or doing patterns and uh, 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 pretend exercises as if we're going to combat to make sure we pass our inspections. Right, Those were things that you knew that's part of the checklist to be consistently checked off as a Marine Expeditionary Unit, Special Operations Capable Unit. So if the Marine Corps is doing it for us, how come how come a lot of us have a hard time adapting that to our civilian life? So if you're facing frustration in your business, or like how come I'm not getting better, is because a you're not consistent with your business. Okay, that 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 be that be that be my transition. So how do you treat your opportunity, just like you did in your in your military career? How did you treat your stripes? How did you treat your time in service? How did you treat the rank that you earned? How, how did you treat the, 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 the superiors above you? Okay. With respect or backbiting them, right? Or did you treat them with honor, dignity, right? Because you knew one day you're going to be that, you're going to be in that position. Okay. So, so if, if you're inconsistent showing up in your business, that's probably a big reason why you're not getting the results out of your business that you're hoping for. You got to transition that discipline that is free to core. Uh, uh, the checklists, the collateral duties that you're doing, you just didn't have one job, you have three or four jobs, you got to transition that into your business, okay? And and unlike just having a job when somebody's telling you to do something, as an entrepreneur, nobody's telling you to do anything. Uh, matter of fact, your clients in the marketplace and your business partners are probably telling you something, and, and, and unless you're there to show up, to listen, bend an ear, get feedback from them, 
right? You're not going to get it. So just because you're the big cheese, just because you're the entrepreneur, just because you decide to go in business for yourself doesn't mean you just show up to the office whenever you feel like it. Treat your business like a job until the, because, until the business becomes a business. Treat your business like a job until the business becomes a business, right? So second thing, never do as an entrepreneur is being cheap. Don't be cheap. Always reinvest back into your business. Always reinvest into getting better. Uh, always reinvest into, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for example, military. We invest into our uniform, dry cleaners. We. I remember uh, one time for uh, uh, corporal's course and sergeant's course. I remember I bought this uh, this uh, a, a Korean uh, 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 boot uh, 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 boot polish, right? Because the Korean boot polish shine better than kiwi boot, boot polish, right? So, so with that being said, I wanted to make sure that I was, I was reinvesting back into boot polish. I just wasn't buying the boot polish that was on base at the PX, at AFES. I wanted to reinvest. I had, a guy, I, I had some guys go to Korea, right, and they came back on a, on, a, on a Mac flight. I said, man, when you're out there, bring me a whole case of Korean boot polish. And by the way, this is how I knew I was an entrepreneur. The guys came back with a whole case full of Korean boot polish, and because I passed my inspections with spit shine, glossy, shiny, mirror-like boots, the other Marines were asking, "Hey, Sapala, what, what polish? How do you spit shine your boots and it shows up so, you know, so, so good? Hook, hook a brother up, and I'd sell the Korean boot polish for ten bucks. And they wouldn't use that Korean boot polish. They use a Kiwi boot polish for other inspections, but they use a Korean boot polish now for my inspections. Now I know some of you new Marines." Out there, so Matt, spit shining your your boots. We don't do that anymore. I know, right? But the same principle applies. Whether it's pressing out your uniform, right, looking good in your in your dress uniform for the Marine Corps ball, right, reinvesting back into your uniform, uh, making sure you're a better Marine by taking uh, correspondence courses. You're always improving yourself. You're always improving your knowledge because if you're improving you, then you can give more. And you can give more to your business. Your business gives more to the community. You're creating more jobs. You're making more of an impact. Why? Because you're constantly reinvesting back into you. See, a, 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 a lot of a, a, now, do a lot of entrepreneurs believe in savings, 100. percent But we also believe in reinvesting back into ourselves. Okay. If that means for an instant that uh, uh, man, you know, I need to take this thousand dollars out of my savings and that was going to be my retirement plan that was going to be my savings but I, I risk myself saying you know what let me take the thousand bucks let me hire a consultant to create better systems let me go to this conference to educate myself on what i don't know and that thousand dollar investment even though it was sitting in my savings brings me back ten thousand dollars of additional revenue because i improved myself well did it pay off 100 percent. wouldn't you agree so that's what i'm talking about in terms of constantly reinvesting into yourself and, and guys, time out real quick, pause, because at the end of this month, I'm speaking at the Murder Mediocrity event, which is right here at the Lakewood, Chicago. There's four other speakers, one speaking on spirituality, one speaking on relationships. I'm speaking on work and money, all right? And Lanell spe uh, 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 what was the other one speaking? I, I forgot what the fourth category was. But the Murder Mediocrity event, you can attend right here in Chicago. I'll be speaking at it. It's at the Lakewood, Chicago and if you if you uh, if you use the code money smart, I'll put the link here at the bottom in the comment section as soon as this live stream is done. But if you'd like to attend this conference, and if you use the registration code money smart, it's fifty percent off for everybody that's following me on social media. Okay, that's a special deal that you guys are getting through me. I'm not making any money off this thing. I'm, it's not an affiliate link. I just want to give back to you. I want to give back to you the years of me uh, uh, taking notes. I, I, I've, been, I've been an entrepreneur now since 19, the, uh, 1998, okay? It's, going, it's, 20, it's 20 years now that I've been dabbling in entrepreneurship, full-time as an entrepreneur since 2001. And, and, and my first career, believe it or not, was either a, was, I was going to either be a loan officer or a, uh, or a stock broker. Right? Those, were, those were my first two things. I eventually went into the financial services side of things. Uh, and I've never looked back ever since. I, I fell in love with the insurance industry and never looked back ever since. Okay, number three. Number three is entrepreneurs never do everything by themselves. They're always looking to build teams. They're, they're, they're always looking for people to help them in areas of weakness. 
Okay. So for example, I know what I'm good at. My wife knows what she's good at. What's going on, Desiree? What's going on, Andrew Murdoch? What's going on, Melissa Lopez, Jamal Spencer, Danny Banks? So, so building a business, listen, John Wooden, speaking of John Wooden, uh, another good book for you guys to read, John Wooden on leadership, okay? Uh, he, passed, he passed away, but uh, John Wooden here uh, was, he, was UCLA, this is the, the highest, most winningest bas college basketball coach. And, John, and he, he built players like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? But John Wooden said, listen, if you want to do it well, do it yourself. If you want to do it well, do, fine, do it yourself. But if you want to go far, you got to build a team. Now, I know notoriously Marines or, or, or from neighborhoods where you come from, like, like Berwyn Sis or Chicago, where I came from, we said, you know what, let's just do it ourselves so we save money. And I remember us changing oils and changing our brakes and all that stuff. And, and I remember on base, there used to be this, this place where we can put our, our cars on a lift. We go out in town, buy the parts at Advanced Auto Parts. We come back to base and we change our own brakes. We do our own oil. We save ourselves 20, 30, 40 bucks because we saved ourselves on labor and all we paid for is parts. Sound like a common sense thing to do, right? But the downside with taking that into business is you, you can do it yourself with those type of things, but actually scaling up your business, you need to find people around you to do those that different type of things. Because you as an entrepreneur, you need to be on your business, not in your business. Okay, you need, for example, uh, we out, uh, listen, I don't know how to be a lawyer and I uh, uh, file my own, I can file my own incorporation paperwork with legal zoom. I, I can make sure I keep my nose clean by having an attorney, uh, uh, right? But why would, why would I just do that, not do that myself? I like hiring attorneys because that's their power spot. I like hiring an accountant because that's their, that's their power spot, not, not just an accountant, a CPA, right? That knows, that knows how to save me money and knows how to make sure I keep in compliance. Those are the type of things I do not want to do myself and figure out mistakes as I go along. I want to make sure I, I'm surrounding myself with people that are a lot more smarter than me, so therefore I can keep advancing my business, right? I can keep advancing my business, and, and, I, and I avoid the pitfalls. Those pitfalls are the higher, smarter, more, more, more wittier people than I am because I know what I do best. I know what I do best. Put me in front of a room of people. Uh, you put me in, a, in, 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 a, in an audience. Uh, you want me to, to, to sell the, the greatness of being an entrepreneur and, and, and how to grow a business and the greatness of the insurance industry and how to build a business in the insurance industry. That's my power spot. My power spot is not making sure that the, uh, uh, my Schedule A is filed properly with all my proper itemized deductions uh, and future deductions based on a new uh, Tax and Jobs Act that President Trump just passed. That's not my power spot. Boring, but it costs me money. So therefore, I need to hire people that are a whole lot more smarter than me. That's going to take a lot more time and attention than I will to do that job for me. Okay, so so entrepreneurs, there, there's a certain point where you got to learn how to start creating systems to delegate to give that to other people because you cannot be all things inside your business. Okay, do it yourself may may work for you know, home projects like putting up a bookshelf or hang up a picture frame. But in terms of growing and scaling your business, you got to build a team. Okay, next one. Most successful entrepreneurs I know never do this. They never shoot from the hip. Okay, hey, Marines, one shot, two kills, right? One shot, two kills. Per perfect side alignment, perfect side picture. Squeeze the trigger, bang! Okay, when you squeeze the trigger, squeeze the trigger surprises you. Same, same thing here too as well. We're not shooting business from the hip, yo. We're shooting the business like snipers. Then we go out when we deploy, we do, do, we do, uh, we do our, our business. The last thing we're doing is shooting from the hip. Stop winging your, your business. Successful entrepreneurs do not wing their business. So what am I talking about? Do you have a system for everything? So for example, tonight we have a workshop in our office. We have a system for when people check in. We have a system for how we welcome people to our workshop. We have a system and how people get divided into three different training rooms and guests into our into our into our um, our boardroom. We have a system for after the workshop to process all the new people that are coming interested about being a client of a firm or being interested in taking a position at a firm either a part time or full time basis. There's a system for that. There's a system in how we run meetings because one of the things I don't like is having too many stinking meetings, right? So. When, um, uh, uh, what is it? Is it 
t- uh, t- Tanner is a lady. This is Tanner. Is this uh, uh, Patrick, my, my brother-in-law's uh, uh, nephew? Uh, is this Tanner? Uh, and if I owe you 10 bucks from what, bro? I, I, listen, the last thing I know is I don't want anybody anything. So if this is the Tanner I'm thinking about in Arizona, good to see you here, I'm in my live stream. Frank Mira says a duplicate, uh, right? Uh, Desiree says delegation, absolutely. So, so, so back to this point, have a system for everything. Have a system for how you process new clients. Have a system for how you handle customer complaints. Have a, have a system and how, and how you uh, pay your people, how often you pay your people. Have a system on how you fire your people. Have a system on how you're recruiting and hiring people. Have, have a system on how you're tracking numbers. Have a system on how you're, you're, you're beating last month's progress because you're tracking your numbers week to week, right? Have a system for everything. Don't shoot, don't shoot your business from the hip. Listen, listen, guys, on, on, our, on our phone, we, we invested $750,000 to create an app, right? We, 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 created, we created this app to create communication uh, with one another. Uh, our developers, uh, we, we took a collective investment to, to invest um, this money into our firm. And so uh, why? Because we're always tracking our numbers. We always see our numbers right here at the right, right at the palm of, of my hand. Okay, so um, all right. So the, okay, it's uh, okay. It's it's a different tanner. Okay, so a- Adrian Loera got me on board with you guys. Awesome, man. Well, listen, uh, welcome aboard. What what part of Arizona are you? Part of Tucson or are you part of uh, Phoenix? Right, we got some good friends there. Uh, Marlene Cormanaris, uh, Chad Tercer in Phoenix, and uh, uh, Rhonda and Lou Pimber in Tucson, uh, Arizona. Cool. All right, so. Um, uh, by the way, guys, you, you, you guys are, uh, Sean Cooper is like, I uh, love the, love the best, but keep it classy. Love the vest. Hey guys, on Tuesdays is the only time you see me dressed like a grown adult. Uh, otherwise, uh, I got my t-shirt on. I got my, I got my hat on, but, uh, we got workshops on Tuesday nights. And, uh, so right after this, a couple, a couple meetings, then we have a workshop at seven o'clock tonight, uh, to, to, to run a, obviously to run a business and to grow our company. So, uh, awesome, man. Uh, good, good to see you, Sean. So do not shoot the business for your hip. Okay, last thing. Last thing. And before I give you the last thing, uh, if you guys are looking to build a business uh, and you're looking to make sure you're avoiding bad habits, you got to make sure you're around people that want to know more, do more, and be more. And if you are in transition from the military, you're looking for a business, and you don't want to spend 35 grand on a franchise, you, you want to spend all your TSP money that you accumulate while your time in service into a business that you don't know if it's going to work, my suggestion is you give us a call because we can introduce you either to our local offices in your area or we, uh, we point you in the direction of an entrepreneur that can help you start a business for less than 500 bucks. Okay, I started my first business and I'm still in it for less than 500 bucks and it's it's made us a million dollars. Uh, the last time I took a paycheck from somebody else was 2001. The last time I find myself under six figures was 2003. Uh, I made my first million by the time I was 35 years old, all because of the things I'm talking to you about, a systems, process, people you're surrounded with, mentors. Uh, hey, guys, I got, I got all sorts of mentors, uh, right? But here, here's a boot camp I went to. I spent a 1000 a month to, to be around people. I'm not saying that you're going to do that with us. I'm just saying I was just so hungry for information because I was, I was all alone. When, when, I was in, when I was a veteran in transition, there was nobody helping me out, nobody. Matter of fact, I remember when I was in transition, the guy at the TAPS class, you guys remember those, those classes, TAPS? Is it still called TAPS? Transition Assistance Program, my TAPS class. Um, I remember them giving me a financial planning class. And I'm, I'm looking at the guy at my TAPS class. I'm like, why are you giving this financial planning class now? Because well, I want to make sure that you're financially prepared to leave the military. I said, I, I know, but how come you weren't in, in my life when I started my career in the military Eight years ago, how come you're showing up now? I could have used that whole thing about compound interest, about tucking some money away, about having a budget. I could have used that financial class at the beginning of my career, not at the end of my career in the military, especially now that I'm a single father with custody of my son just looking for a job. So that's that's why it's an honor for me and an honor for me to have you guys on this live stream to join me and to share this. And if you share this, uh, I want to send you guys a book called Principles by Ray Dalio so you can add and build your library. This is a couple books from my library here. 
All right, like I got a lot more books here. Man, I got books all, all books all over the doggone place. John Maxwell Leadership Bible. I got books all over the place. We're moving. I just wanted to share this with you because books has absolutely changed my life. And and these five things that I'm about to share with you, the fifth thing, will allow you to get out of your business, out of your decision to become, a, to become an entrepreneur. So therefore, you're much more profitable and happier sooner than later. Okay? And so... And so uh, if you're looking for people to surround yourself with, to get you in a business, to get you started for less than 500 bucks, drop me a message, send me a private message, uh, let me know, uh, let, let me know uh, uh, what city and state that you're in, and, and, and I'll point you in the right direction. Uh, uh, Frank says, I probably have some Jordans out with that too. <laughs> ah, you know my style, brother. You, you know my style. All right. So uh, Danny Banks says he, he's going to uh, throw some nice clothes on and join us tonight in Oakbrook. Great. Listen, guys, if you want to join us in Oakbrook tonight, if you happen to be in the Chicagoland area, 7 p.m. tonight, there's going to be a workshop about our firm, PHP Agency, about the four steps on how to create wealth. So uh, if you want to join us tonight, 7 p.m. in Oakbrook, four steps on how to create wealth. Okay. One of them is understanding sales and how to learn sales. Okay. And I'll leave it at, I'll leave it at that. If I want to find out the other three, you got to show up to our office tonight. So therefore we can help you put more money in your pocket in 2018. All right. So number four, don't be inconsistent. Okay. Never, ne never be inconsistent. Always be consistent. Number two, don't be cheap. Always reinvest into your business. Number three, don't always do things yourself. Find and start building a team. Find out what strengths and qualities you have. Delegate your average and excellent skills to everybody else. You stay in your power spot that gives you awesome energy. Okay? Uh, uh, number four, stop shooting your business from the hip. Uh, Nabil says he, he and Ramit. Ramit are going to be there tonight. Awesome. Uh, uh, what's, what's your cousin Ramit's last name? We'll make sure we put him on the roster there, Nabil. Okay? Uh, uh, jo, jo, hey, is this John, a devil dog? 6.30 in Minnesota. What's going on, John? This is another Marine in transition working out of our Minnesota office with John Daniel. Good to see you out here, Devil Dog. All right. Last one. Last one. Never play safe. Never play defense. Okay. Unlike the Marine Corps, unlike the Marine Corps, your life is not on the line. Okay. Now your finances may be on the line, but right? What would you rather have? Your finances on the line or your life? Well, if you've made it back and you're considering entrepreneurship, thank God we didn't got to worry about bombs and bullets. Okay? So, I want you guys to know, in business, as an entrepreneur, stop playing safe. Stop playing defense. And if you're around people that stop playing safe, here's what I'm talking about playing safe. Well, I'm not sure if this is going to work and, you know... Um, uh, uh, I'm just not going to reinvest my money. I'm not going to invest any time in the building is because this business may not work. I might fail and I'm just going to stick with my secure job. That's playing safe and that's playing defense. There's a difference between saying, you know what? I'm pissed off being overworked and underpaid. I'm pissed off working for somebody else versus working for me. I'm, I'm pissed off of being undervalued and underappreciated. Everybody getting promoted here through politics. I want to outperform everybody. I want to outwork everybody. I want to outlast everybody. And guess what? I'm going to out-earn everybody. If that's you, then you're geared for entrepreneurship. You're geared for capitalism. You're geared for free enterprise. Because here's what I know. The same dogged determination we had in the military, the same 18-hour, 20-hour workday that you know you were easily working, that was work. What's work here in the business world? Being behind a computer, speak, speak, speaking into a microphone, getting on the phone. Talking to people, that's work. This ain't nothing. And, and, and for those of you veterans, I want you guys to know the business world is a whole lot easier than you think it is. Playing defense is, you know, I just get a job as a cop, as a firefighter, postal worker. Nothing against that. Nothing against being, being a cop, postal worker, firefighter, honorable possession, uh, professions. But if you said, but if you said, man, I want to do something big and special in my life. Man, I'm playing offense. I want to surround myself with people playing offense. Entrepreneurs always know how to take risks. I remember my mother, nurse. I'm Filipino by background, ethnic background. I remember my first time taking a credit card. I put $5,000 on my credit card. Now, mind you, I was making about 18, 1800 bucks a month 
in the military. So for me to put $5,000 on a credit card to invest into a workshop that teaches me how to sell, that teaches me what financial programs and products to offer my clientele when I was an advisor, when I was an agent back in 2000, 2001, and I can get a 10 times return on it because I'm banking on me, well, guess, well, guess what happens? That, that month, by investing five grand, I made $30,000 that month. So I said, Mom, just hold your breath. Right? I know your opinion about me because she's a nurse. Her, uh, I said, Ma, you took a risk yourself. You left the Philippines. You came over here to America. You know nobody. You took a risk. Let me do, let me do my part in taking a risk. Let me, let me make a significant, let me make a, make a significant decision in our family's lineage that every generation has made a significant decision to improve our family's life. You made it, mom, by coming to America. Me, mom, dad, I want to be, a, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be in the Marine Corps. That's number one. Number two, I want to be an entrepreneur, right? Because no Filipino goes to the Marine Corps and no Filipino ever becomes an entrepreneur. If you ever run to a Filipino, guys, uh, they're usually a doctor, a dentist, an engineer, an accountant, or, or, an, or an architect. One of those five professions. Because those professions make good money. Those professions make good money. 5 p.m., right? There it is. Okay? Uh, I decided to become a United States Marine. I went against the grain. Why? Because I didn't want to go to college. I did porn school. I had a 2.2 GPA. The only reason I had a 2.2 GPA is because I was playing sports. I'm a six foot three Filipino that happened to jump and run and and, and swim pretty quickly. I happened to dunk. I would go out uh, uh, and spread it wide and catch a touchdown pass. I did that pretty uh, pretty good. And you know what? In the back of my mind, I just, I just, I just wanted to break a stereotype. That's right, Deanne. I, want, I wanted to break a stereotype. I wanted to break a stereotype. And stereotypically, I wanted to break a stereotype with inside my military community or the Filipino community that everybody looked good, but I know back behind the scenes, everybody was broke. Everybody smelled good, looked good, but deep down inside, they didn't have 50 grand to, to rub together, to invest into some real estate, to invest in, into a business, to invest in something big and special that give them a, a 10x return. Nobody had that got, uh, nobody got that going on. So that's what I decided to do. And when I decided, when I decided to do that, when I decided to do that, my whole life changed. My, I married my wife. My wife is making $160,000 a year as a medical sales rep for Stryker Medical selling hospital beds. And I said, and she knew sales, but she didn't know entrepreneurship and she didn't know the insurance industry and she didn't know the, our platform. As soon as she came over here, within six months, she made a hundred grand. 14 months, she made 250. Okay. That's the power of understanding sales and understanding entrepreneurship. And if you want to know more about that, that's part of our four steps on how to create wealth. In all of our 42 offices that we have tonight doing this workshop. So I'm just I'm just one office, but I happen to represent 41, 42 offices in America. We got we got De, uh, Desiree Galeo here. They're doing their workshop tonight in Ventura, California. We got a uh, uh, Frank uh, Frank uh, Frank Mira Mira all right, Vilsec doing it in McAllen, Texas, uh, right? Uh, we've got we got plenty of offices all across the country. We got an office here in Chicago, in Naperville, doing it at seven p.m. Our office here in Oak Brook, uh, doing it at seven p.m. Because we're preaching the, the the four steps on how to create wealth. So, if you want to avoid these mistakes, you know, want to avoid these negative qualities of an entrepreneur, and you want to get on the good foot, reach out. Let us know where you're at. Send us a message. We love to connect with you. We love to connect with our, with our friends in business all across the country. And last but not least, guys, um, uh, 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 Tucson, uh, Tucson, all right, Tucson definitely uh, uh, has an office at 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan Aaron, he's running his office in, uh, uh, in Tucson, Arizona tonight too as well. And uh, tomorrow, guys, uh, for tomorrow's, make sure you stay posted for tomorrow's live stream. I actually have a Marine. We got all, all of our, our PHP family here. Uh, um, uh, Banaby Cartoon showing Fantil. Okay. Uh, if that's your name, cool. 7 p.m. in Houston. We have a Houston office uh, as well. We have offices all across the country. Um, and so if you want to attend one of our workshops tonight, we have offices all across the country. And a lot of our friends have been uh, sharing where they're going to be hosting their workshop uh, in their respective cities and states at 7 p.m. tonight on uh, uh, this Tuesday. Four steps and I create wealth.
So uh, as, as I close off, guys, uh, I, I just want to encourage you guys to watch our workshop, tomorrow, uh, my live stream tomorrow, because I actually have a Marine I went to Somalia with uh, in the 15 Marine Expeditionary Unit. And he's actually in business with me in our San Diego office. And his wife, Annel, who's been a financial advisor for 12 years, is in business with us in our San Diego office with our good friends, Chris and Mary Phillips. And uh, we're, we're, I'm going to be interviewing them tomorrow about what his transition was like because he, he, he came down with some, uh, some bad PTSD, got a degree in psychology, and he's going to share tomorrow afternoon at uh, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. So come, make sure you come back to our Facebook page tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, to listen to Javier Castro and Anel Castro about what it's like to transition as a financial advisor, as now as an official entrepreneur using the PHP system, and what uh, Javier Castro's transition like was from Marine Corps uh, Special Operations Unit, PTSD, and now into an entrepreneur, and what entrepreneur has done for him in terms of relieving him with a lot of his stress with PTSD. So uh, Jamal Spencer, he says, Houston will welcome you with open arms. We have an awesome office in Houston, too, as well, ran by our good friends, Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas. Uh, we got uh, Miguel Angel Martinez uh, running an office in Gilroy, California, which is the garlic city capital of the United States, uh, which is in San Jose, Silicon Valley. Listen, guys, all of our offices tonight are, 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 are hitting it hard tonight, sharing the message of the four steps and how to create wealth. And if you want to create wealth, you're watching this replay. And he said, Matt, I want to avoid those mistakes as an entrepreneur. And I want to know the four steps on how to create wealth as an entrepreneur. Reach out to me uh, at this replay. I'll send you a message. If you're here in the Chicagoland area, you can come out to our office in, in, in Oak Brook. And we'll show you the ropes, man. We'll show you the ropes. We'll help you uh, put more money in your pocket. We'll surround you with the right, uh, right people. We'll help you uh, get involved in a very uh, wealthy uh, industry. Um, John Lance is one of his Marines, is my business partner in San Diego too as well. Man, a lot of veterans on this live stream, man. I love it. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share this live stream with a lot of your veteran groups in your respective cities and states. And if you are the one we select that shares this the most, we want to send you this book. If you already have this book, we're going to send it to you anyway. So therefore, you can give it to somebody else. You can bless their life and help them build their li library. You know, a shock shocking stat that I read is most people after graduating high school never, ever read a book again. And if they do read a book, they don't get past page 19. And you wonder, and you wonder why so many people are on, in left field or right field when it comes to their finances. All the knowledge is in books, guys. You know, uh, you know there, there's, a, there's a saying there, if, if you wanted to control the people, you keep them illiterate. So how come we're in a country where we are literate, but yet we're not reading? You know, in other countries that, that I visit in the Marine Corps, they would love to learn how to read and write. So therefore, they can grow a business and take care of themselves. And that's a blessing you have here in America to, to be able to read, to be able to write, to be able to bless your business, to bless your family, and to bless your community. And you and I can get on this message of transforming the way people uh, think, feel, manage, and reach towards financial independence through the gift of entrepreneurship and free enterprise. And I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. I uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, Artur Maureen says, I need that book. Artur, if you share this video and share with the most amount of people out there, man, and uh, we, we, we do the count. You're the, one, you, you're the one that shared it the most. I will send, it, send you this book from my desk to your house or to your office, wherever you want us to send it. Make sure you private message me too as well with your, with your address. So that being said, thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you tune in tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, as I interview Javier Castro and Anel, uh, a former United States Marine turned entrepreneur, former financial advisor turned entrepreneur, and hear their story of how they're now growing a fast-growing organization in financial services in our San Diego office with PHP Agency. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'll see you tonight at the workshops. If you're watching this right now and you're watching the replay and you still want to attend, it's not 7 p.m. yet, send me a message. We'll make sure we put you on our guest list. Just make sure you reply and send me a private message and you put money smart. All right? Cool. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for sharing this video. Thanks for dropping your comments. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Ooh, freaking rock, devil dog. <laughs>